Strata, we need to talk. Really. Um, we, there is a huge debate, and we need to put an end to it. And I mean, people don't know where to put their commas. I'm talking about SQL. I'm sure most of you must love SQL. I love SQL. Um, it's born in 1978, and it's the one language, we, the best thing we have when we want to analyze, analyze data. But it's not perfect. Uh, most of you ma must have learned SQL with a sentence like this. This is how you get one column of data. This is how you get two columns. Then you go for three, and suddenly things don't work. What's wrong here? That extra comma. Yes, you've been there. SQL will not allow you to put a hanging comma at the end unlike any other modern language. And this has driven people to two different camps. There are people that put their commas at the end, people that put their commas at the beginning. Who likes their commas at the end? Who likes their commas at the beginning? You monsters. <laughs> That's ugly. Well, I, I'm one of you. I like to put my commas at the beginning. I find it's more productive. But it's hard to convince people about this. So I happen to work at Google, where we make decisions based on data. Also, I work for Google Cloud Platform, where we share our best tools with everyone, so things that we use internally, you are also able to use. And one of them is BigQuery. With BigQuery, we can analyze not only terabytes of data in seconds, we are also able to share data with, within our teammates, within third parties, publicly, and we love um, using it to collaborate to discuss, to take the same data and reach conclusions together. In this case, for example, I have all of GitHub data stored in BigQuery. And with a query of this, like this, I can see how many events GitHub has seen this year, 360 million events. I can join this table with other tables. I can bring in, uh, for example, uh, count the number of distinct users, active users this year, and I can bring another table to see where are they coming from, what, what are the most popular countries on GitHub. The United States, China, um, India, which we would call an unfair ranking. I mean, these are the biggest countries, of course, they have the most users. So let's bring in more tables, let's bring in more data, and let's get uh, the countries that have the most GitHub users per capita. And now we have countries like Iceland, Sweden, Norway on top. Cold countries. Or not. So now we can bring in more data, we can join this with the world's uh, weather data that we have in, and we can get uh, a chart like this, which shows that, yes, uh, the coldest countries up on the top left are the ones with the highest concentration of programmers. Uh, the opposite on the other side. But if you look at that point on, on the top right, that's Singapore. Yes, Singapore, you have the highest concentration of programmers on GitHub within the hot countries. Congratulations. <laughs> but let me get back to our problem. Uh, where do we put our commas? And this is not tabs versus spaces. This really matters. Um, and I'm going to bring in all code I can find on GitHub. I'm going to analyze uh, gigabytes of SQL code, and I will use it to count the number of lines that end with a comma, start with a comma, and the results show that most lines end with a comma. I lost. Or not. Because the real question is, what projects are more successful? How do we measure that? Uh, the number of stars, the number of stars last year, the number of contributors, the activity, et cetera, et cetera. We can define our success metrics, and we can measure, and we can write a query, we can get the results in seconds, and it basically says that projects that allow leading people to write leading commas are double as productive as the others. It's true. You can go and measure it. In any dimension you want. Thank you. Yes, you want the leading comma soup. So my message here is that maybe I will not stop all fights, because I'm sure I didn't convince everyone here. 
someone will ask about correlation, causation, how do you, are you measuring this, why an average? And the whole point is that you can fight me. You can use the same tools, you can use um, the same queries uh, and data and analyze it and fight me. Some people we will never convince, no matter how much data we show them. Uh, we call them industry analysts. Sorry. <laughs> but yes, uh, at least we should embrace data in this fight.